Good afternoon and welcome for another installment of Ask the Expert. Today we're going to go through all of Pettit's multiple epoxies. We have uh, everything from our easy techs, easy, simple to use, one to one mix ratio, quick repair epoxy. We have our flexible repair epoxy, flex epoxy. We have our uh, two part epoxy fairing compound, easy fair, which is available in a few different sizes. We have our Easy Bond, which is a, I like to call it a super glue on steroids. We have our Splash Zone A788, a structural two part repair epoxy. We find this being used a lot in commercial uh, type of uh, work. And we're going to go through all these. We're going to compare them to some products that are out in the market. We're going to compare them to, the, to each other. Um, so, over the next hour, we're going to bring you through quite a bit of uh, epoxy mixing information, we're going to go through some tips and trips, uh, tips and tricks. We're going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of multiple products. We're going to talk about uh, just general repair epoxy knowledge and questions. What is a, a mean blush? What is exotherm? What is coefficient of expansion? We're going to talk about all those kinds of, um, uh, kinds of items here when we're going to do these epoxies. I have a quick little demo board I made up here. This has a bunch of different holes and, and gouges and grinds and cuts, kind of, uh, you know, what you'd see. You'd obviously V this out if you're doing a uh, spider crack, but just kind of some fine fixing. Um, so we're going to go through some spreading of the epoxies on this demo board. We're going to talk about uh, drilling and tapping. We're going to talk about fixing the um, canvas snaps that have pulled out. So we got quite a few things we're going to go over here over the next hour. First thing I'm going to do is, uh, as I'd advise everyone on the, on the, on the uh, video here, always take off any watches or jewelry whenever you're working with epoxies. Um, epoxies are permanent, so you don't want to destroy a nice watch or a ring or something like that. Second most important thing, whenever you're dealing with epoxies, you have to wear gloves. The amines and all the other um, raw materials in epoxies are not friendly to the skin. Uh, you can wear gloves. There are certain uh, waxes or coatings you can put on your skin to protect yourself from the amines. But it's very important that whenever you're dealing with any epoxies, you're wearing the right protective equipment. All right. First thing I'm going to get started here with is our Easy Tex. Easy Tex is our quick, simple one to one mix ratio repair epoxy. Many of you folks may be familiar with this item. It's called Marine Tex. Marine Tex has been on the market for, geez, uh, 30, 40 years. And the technology is just equally as old. It's a very old school, five to one mix ratio, has a very stiff part A. For any of you that have ever worked with it, um, it's uh, like a sticky, sticky, sticky Play-Doh. Uh, very, very, um, just tough to work with, very thick, not easy to mix or apply. And then you have the resin, um, which is a liquid resin. Uh, again, old school technology. I'm going to grab a pallet over here. I'm grabbing a pallet that is a non-porous type of finish. You should also use a non-porous uh, pallet. The first thing they do is they go and grab uh, cardboard because it's cheap. They usually have it laying around. Uh, but there's a lot of problems with using cardboard. The first problem is when referring to Marine Tex, Marine Tex is a five to one. So the first thing you have to do is figure out what five parts of this is. They say a golf ball, right? So we'll just call it that for right now. So it's a golf ball size to a one inch line of resin. Uh, another little uh, quick tip here for you. Whenever you're working with epoxies, baby wipes work really well to clean up. Uh, it's the alcohol, I assume, that's in it. Um, they do a really great job cleaning off your gloves. Uh, it wipes off very easily. So you can continue to wear the same gloves and not have to you know, churn and burn through a bunch of gloves. So a uh, really quick tip. Baby uh, wipes are really helpful when working with epoxies. 
So, like I said, one of the mistakes amateurs usually make is now they take this liquid resin and they pour it onto, onto the cardboard. Now, I've over-exaggerated this just so you can see it, but what's the first thing that happens when you pour a liquid hardener onto a cardboard? Cardboard is porous. It absorbs the, the catalyst. So if originally you had a one-to-one -one mix rate, or I'm sorry, a five-to-one mix ratio, now it's a 10 to one, 15 to one, 20 to one, who knows? And the longer that resin or, or hardener stays on the surface, the more it soaks in. And again, just talking about mixing marine text together, it, because of the part A is so thick and so just um, difficult to work with, trying to mix the two can always uh, be a chore. So what we did a few years ago is we came out with marine tech, um, with easy text. I'm just going to throw this out. Easy text is a whole different animal. Easy text is a simple one-to-one -one mix ratio. What does that look like? So when you open up the box, you have a little bit of an instruction manual here. You have a you have your two part A and you have your uh, your part B here. Part A is white, part B is green. They're both the same consistency. So you're not fighting a liquid hardener with a really sticky, really tough to mix uh, epoxy resin. So what I'm gonna do is uh, take a little popsicle stick here. Um, again, it's one-to-one. -one. It's very buttery smooth. It comes out super easy. Um, it's really nice to work with. So I'll do a dollop of that, put the cap back on. I'll do a dollop of part B. Now, epoxies are usually um, measured out by weight. That's really the way they want it done. Uh, but one of the things we looked at when we looked at uh, the old school technology was how people usually mix and measure them. And I can tell you, nobody is mixing epoxies by weight. They're, they should, but they're not. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure our epoxy system was simple enough that the do-it-yourselfer or the boatyard could easily um, measure out what you need. So we actually threw in a little bit of a variable in there. You could be off 20% either way, and it's still going to cure. It's still going to work exactly how it should. Um, so I'm just going to squeeze this out here. Squeeze this out here. Now, another thing I'll, t I'll touch upon real quick. Someone who's unfamiliar with epoxies will usually go and grab a popsicle stick because it's easy to get out of a, a jar. Um, they're inexpensive. But the problem is when you're mixing it, you can't actually scrape all the way down. You're only hitting the farthermost point of the mixing tip. So you always want to use a mixer, a pallet, a squeegee, a scraper, something that is has a flat surface to it so every time you come back to mix in you are scraping the bottom and getting all the material off the pallet it is super 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 important that you do that and then you want to push back into the coating as you're mixing to make sure that any of the resin that was on the stick or on your pallet has come off go back through here scrape it off and that's 100% mixed. What's really nice about our system is, because it's white and green, when the green is mixed all the way into it, you know it's 100% mixed together. If you still see green streaks in here, well, you gotta continue mixing, okay? So that is our, marine, that is our Easy Tex in our four ounce container. Easy Tex comes in a few different variations. It comes in a four ounce container, comes in a 16 ounce container and we also have a rapid cure version. I'll crack this open and I'll mix it for you as well. The rapid cure version is, a, is quite a bit different from regular uh, easy text in the terms of this will cure in an hour compared to marine tech, uh, compared to easy text. Uh, easy text, you really want to wait overnight for this. It's really like an eight hour cure. Uh, so it's a bit slower compared to rapid cure, but still faster than the old school technology. Uh, what are the uses for marine for easy techs? 
Um, you could use it for just about um, any repair above or below the waterline. We find Easy Tech's getting used for, um, you know, canvas snaps that get pulled out uh, and fill in the holes, screw holes from electronics that need filling, um, you name it, it does it. Uh, blisters, uh, although if it's a lot of blisters, most people go with a fairing compound because it's over a, a bigger surface. But I'll just show you real quick here how, how easy this is and how smooth it is to, to apply. This is just going over some gouges here. And this is really not the greatest application tool. This is just a popsicle stick. Uh, if you really want to do a nicer job, you could always come over, grab a nicer plastic scraper. Uh, I always recommend plastic when dealing with epoxies for a couple reasons. Epoxies, for the most part, don't stick to plastic. So say you do a, a bad job cleaning your tools. Well, the next day you could come back here and just snap the epoxy off of the plastic. So that's a really nice uh, uh, tip or trick. You, like I said, you can fill blisters with it. You could fill um, voids or, or um, holes, screw holes, things like that. Um, you know, I always recommend if you're doing a paint job or something like that, leave it a little low. Uh, so you can come back and either put a primer coat on it or you could always overfill it and then let it cure and then sand it back. There's really no right or wrong way how to do that. You could do it either way. I've seen it done both ways a million times. Um, but the important thing is, at the end of the day, you've got to make sure that the hole is completely filled so that when you do come over with the top coat, if you're going to uh, just sand it back or put primer in there, make sure it's completely smooth so that when you put your paint over it, it doesn't um, accentuate or make that repair um, really stand out. Uh, it could be used again for if you're going to do um, spider cracks, things like that. If you're going to fix spider cracks, of course, you have to go back into the fiberglass, grind into the fiberglass well. You can use our flex poxy for that. You could then hot coat the flex poxy and then put the easy text over top. Um, but if you're going to do a spider crack, again, you always want to grind it out, grind a V into it, put a structural repair in there such as flex poxy or resin and glass, and then come back and, and put a filler over top of it. So uh, that's our regular easy text. Switching gears here are Easy Tech's Rapid Cure. Easy Tech's Rapid Cure is a one to one mix ratio, just like our uh, regular Easy Tech's. The difference is this cures in an hour. So we find this being used a lot more often for the things I was refer referring to before, such as fixing a canvas snap that's pulled out of a windshield, that's pulled out of fiberglass. Um, you know, this, this type of repair happens every single day for do-it-yourselfers, for boat yards. Um, so I'm going to talk about that here in a second. This is a really nice package here. You could use the cap, push it into the, into the tube here to open it up. Again, it's a one-to-one. -one, so if you do a, you know, a one-inch line of uh, the part A, You can come back and put a one inch line of the part B. This does use a different resin uh, system because again, this is a rapid cure or fast cure system. We can't use our traditional uh, resins that are in our regular Easy Tex. Um, so we've come out with the uh, rapid cure here. And what you wanna do is you mix these two together this is very different in terms of color than regular Easy Tex. Regular Easy Tex is white. This is not white. This is, um, it's gonna finish off a kind of a medium gray color, almost more black. And again, whenever you're mixing epoxies, straight edge or flat edge onto a flat surface, flat non-porous surface, and always scrape, 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 and clean. Okay, so just like that. Now I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna apply this to a hole that I've already uh, drilled in here. Now I, you know, obviously in a repair where you're dealing with uh, a snap that's ripped out, um, you know, your hole's already there. 
I suggest, because what normally happens is the gel coat around the hole pulls out, becomes all loose and brittle, chip all that away. Hopefully it's not too big of a repair. Make the hole slightly bigger than the screw that's going to go into it. And then you could place the screw into the easy tex and kind of screw kind of screw it in like that. Let that cure for an hour, it's never going to come out again. That's a permanent repair. Um, so differences between our easy tex uh, traditional style or, or regular style, this is white in color. Uh, the rapid cure would be more of a gray or a black in color um, as you mix it or um, as it's cured. Uh, both being one-to-one -one mix ratios, they're super easy to, um, to dispense or measure out. Very nice and easy, very, uh, very simple to work with. Um, we do not make a gray uh, easy text. A lot of people may be looking for um, you know, your traditional marine text, which comes in white or gray. Um, gray is usually uh, used for metals or used for heat, you know, manifolds or something like that. Splash Zone is a far superior product when it comes to metal repair. So we don't offer an easy tex gray. We offer Splash Zone, which comes in three different sizes. This is the middle size. We offer a quart size, uh, which happens to be two of these half pints put together. Um, so that's a far superior repair in terms of metal. Um, my lovely assistant here, do I have any questions? Uh, Norbert asks, how do you fill a screw hole with epoxy? I always find the air trapped inside compresses and pushes epoxy back out, leaving da, 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 leaving a void. Sure. It's a fantastic question. Um, many times where, like in such this re uh, repair, um, you know, fiberglass, depending where it is in the boat, a lot of times when you're putting these screws or, or anything through, it actually is going through into either the bilge or something like that. So there's actually uh, an area for the epoxy to go through. Um, so that's one side of it. So a lot of times it's not really an issue. When it is an issue and you do start to see it pop out, you just have to keep working the epoxy back in there. Um, that's also one of the reasons why you, you make the hole a little bit bigger than the screw. You can put the screw in, put the screw out, the screw will wind up uh, uh, releasing some of that air and also you know say this wasn't as nice as it is or as um, uh, tight as it is you can also put some epoxy onto the screw and then push the screw in so that's a great question there's a couple ways how to uh, how to get around that any other questions no okay great um, one of the things I see all the time with uh, old-school marine techs is a lot of people want to make it cure faster they're always in a rush the problem with doing that when you over catalyze epoxies are a few things. They yellow prematurely. Now, mind you, there's no epoxy in the world that stands up to UV light. All epoxies will break down from UV. So they always have to be top coated with paint or something else. Um, another thing that happens when you over catalyze epoxies is they become very brittle. If you're trying to do this repair with an over catalyzed version of easy text or marine text what happens is a few years down the road that might break down obviously really bad case uh, scenario you don't want to deal with that so never over catalyze epoxies the other uh, portion of it is when you over catalyze an epoxy you lose a lot of its water resistance the reason why we choose epoxies around the boat is for their water resistance every epoxy on this table is a both 100% waterproof and 100% solvent proof. Do not compromise that by over catalyzing the epoxy. Just don't do it. Uh, it's just not good. So never over catalyze your epoxies. So that's, the, that's our easy text. Kind of gives you uh, an alternative to the old school uh, technologies that are out there. I hope that helps you out. Easy text is available at retailers all over the US. Um, you know, your West Marines, all your, your other online retailers, it's available at your local uh, boat yards and retail stores and your local boat yards that have retail stores. So next time you, you need to do a repair around the boat, check out Easy Tech. You'll never regret it. It's the same price as the old school technology, 
but you get twice as much product, four ounces as opposed to two ounces. So it's a tremendous value. The next product I'm going to talk about is called Flexpoxy. Again, I'm dipping back into my baby wipes here. Um, again, anytime you get epoxies on your gloves, don't throw the gloves away. Just clean up your gloves. Very simple, very easy, very quick. So the next few epoxies I'm going to talk about come in TAH cartridges. Uh, TAH cartridge, if you haven't seen it before, this is a cutout. So this is what the epoxies look like without the labels on and cut in half. The reason why I show this, you know, epoxies are two parts. Now there's different mix ratios for different epoxies. Our Flexpoxy and Easy Fair are both two to one. So two parts part A, one part catalyst. Our Easy Bond is a one to one. So the inside looks a little bit different, but the philosophy or, or concept is still the same. What you have here, when you throw it in your caulk gun, is you have a plunger. This plunger right here, as you depress it through the caulk gun, it, mix, it pushes the two parts out together. Now, a lot of people say, well, does this mix it together? No. It only dispenses it at the correct ratio. There's two ways you can mix it. Now, there's a little cap, uh, a little plug, and a little cap that's at the top of these. I'll show you how those come off. As it gets dispensed, it comes out at the proper mix ratio of 2 to 1 or 1 to 1. And again, just wor it works like this and they come out separate through the end. You'll see two separate colors on our pallets. Why, do, why am I making a big deal about this? Well, because we get phone calls in the tech line all the time of people saying, oh, the, the, the tube I got is broken. It's only gone half its way. Well, folks, it's not like buying a tube of caulk where it's a single component product and the plunger goes all the way through. Again, it's only one, it's only one component so that's why I really put, that's why I push this so hard. It's important to get an understanding of this. The tube isn't broken. You have a similar amount of product in the tube as a traditional um, single part, but it is two parts, and there is a little bit less product in here because you have all this, uh, all these plastic parts. So um, when I throw the caulk, or when I throw the uh, epoxy in the cartridge here in a second, you'll see it come out dispensed two different, uh, two different colors. Any questions? No? Okay, great. So let's talk about caulk guns here for a second. Now, if you go and use our epoxies without a mixing tip, our epoxies do come with mixing tips. So if you pick it up at your favorite marine retailer, uh, you, it'll come with a mixing tip, as you can see here. I'll talk about mixing tips in a second. So this guy just pops off, your cap pops off, and then you have a plug in here. So, you know, these are filled in a machine, so these usually have to come off with a, uh, a pair of pliers, but sometimes it pulls off by hand. Um, put your plug down. As you can see here, it is separated down the middle. This caulk gun right here is an 18 to 1 ratio. Why do I make reference to that? If you're going to use a mixing tip, it requires an 18 to 1 gun to adequately or properly push the epoxy through. Why? Because you're trying to put two very thick isotropic resins through this little mixing tip. Now I'll come close to the camera here because you can't see it from far away. This right here has a bunch of little mixing teeth in there. So as the epoxy wanders through here, You'll see two separate colors down here, but at the end, they, they come out completely mixed together. This is a really uh, convenient tool, uh, these mixing tips. What you'll find is there's a, quite a bit of loss here. Uh, there's about an ounce of product that goes through the, the tip that you're going to lose. There's no way to get that product out of here. So what I recommend for boat yards and folks like that, sure, there is efficiency here, by putting it through the caulk gun and using the mixing tip. It's probably faster than mixing it on a pallet, but there is this law, so i just like to make you aware of that. These are available, they do come with the tubes. Uh, for these purposes, I'm not gonna use a mixing uh, tip, I'm just gonna mix it here on the pallet so that you can see the, two, the colors of the tube come out separate. 
Um, another tip with these TAH cartridges, every one, because they're filled in a machine, what you want to do is you want to dispense, you want to basically trash the first inch of um, depression here, first inch of resin. Why? Because you only see one resin coming out right now, and that's the resin closest to the tip. So what you want to make sure is they're both coming out together, which they are now. So what you can do is just come back here, take, uh, take your scraper or pallet, make them even, so that now your mix ratio is correct. If you were just to dole out the epoxy without getting rid of the first inch, you'd be off on your mixing ratio. So right here, just dispense it, it comes out two to one. Okay, um, you can take your baby wipes here, you can wipe this off, take care of the, the tip there so that the two don't mix together when you put the cap back on, and then you can put the cap back on. Now, because I'm familiar with this product, I know what part A and part B is. I can look at the top, uh, the tip here, and I could go, okay, so it goes like this. But what I'd recommend, if you're unfamiliar with these, these uh, cartridges, before you take the tip out, take a marker and just mark so you know which way the, the cap should be oriented when you put it back on the can or back on the tube. Um, I'm probably giving you a lot more information than I have to, but if you're unfamiliar with these tubes, I just want to make sure you're as familiar with them as possible. So uh, put your cap back on and put your twist cap back on. The beauty of this cartridge, as you see, is I didn't have to do any measuring. The other epoxies that are on the market, the, um, you know, uh, that come in tubs and you have to use dispensers, the dispenser gives you a mix ratio, that, that's great, that's five to one. But if you don't have that, and you actually have to measure it by hand, it becomes a real chore. So this takes out all the chemistry work or all the science that you need to do. You don't have to actually uh, do any, uh, you know, calculus or algebra to figure out how much product you need. You throw in a caulk gun, you give it a couple clicks, you dispense it, you mix it, and you apply it. Put the cap back on. This will never go bad. You have a question? Uh, Jim asked to show the cutaway like you did the tip. Oh, okay. Yeah, great. I will do that. Um, let me do that right now, actually. So I believe the question is, what is the, what's the tip look like? So when it, when it comes off, it has this split in half cap here. So one, one half was on the part A, the other half was on the part B. So my suggestion is, when you, if you're unfamiliar with them, it's going to be like this. Okay? So this is how you get it. What I would do is, before you crack it open, take a marker and just mark right here where the, the cap came off from. So when you go to, to, to put it back on after you're done using it, if you don't use up the whole tube, you put it back on the right side. And then this doesn't matter, you can put this on any way you like. Thank you for the question. So as you can see, there's two different colors here. Uh, your, your base and your catalyst. Again, using either a really nice plastic scraper or mixer, you know, just for these little repairs. I, I hate to, you know, you know, use a dollar scraper. You know, we're not doing anything special here. I'm just kind of dispensing this onto, um, onto a piece of plywood here. So I'm just going to mix this up. And again, always scraping the bottom, mixing the two very well. What you're going to start to see is it's changing color. You had a clear and a purple and as you continue to mix it, it all turns more of a clear or opaque type color. This tells you that you've got it completely mixed up. Okay, so I'm going to take a second here. I'm going to put this right over to the side. What I want to show you here is on this demo board, oh, on the back, I, th I drilled a hole completely through the board. 
I did this for a couple reasons. I wanted to show you uh, the versatility of flex epoxy. And I also want to tell you, because again, I keep referring to plastic, epoxy's not sticking to plastic. So a lot of times, a lot of repairs that get done with um, flex epoxy is a drill and tap type situation. Uh, a, a balsa core is rotted and they'll, they'll leave the fiberglass, but take the rotted balsa core out from that area. Um, because the product's so thick, it could fill a large void without falling out or drooping. Um, but for these purposes, you know, I didn't want to get um, epoxy all over the table. So what I did is I just uh, put a piece of tape on the back because at the end of this demo, you know, if it, once it's dry, you know, tomorrow, I can just take off that piece of plastic um, and it'll be 100% smooth. Flex epoxy, just like the name uh, would suggest, is a flexible epoxy meaning that it doesn't sand the best. Uh, it's actually a little bit on the more difficult so side of sanding. Um, it's more of a grind, if we're, if we're being honest here. So one of the tips or tricks when dealing with flex poxy is put the flex poxy in the spot that you want it to, and then you can take some saran wrap or cellophane, something like that, and actually smooth it over the surface. Let it cure, come back, you know, the next day. You can pull that plastic off. It won't affect the epoxy whatsoever. It doesn't affect the epoxy cure. But what it will leave you with is a completely flat, uh, flush, completely smooth surface. You want to re remove any material. If you want to paint it, hit it really quick with, you know, 80 grit, 120 grit, uh, you know, 320 grit. It depends on what you're, what you're doing. If you're priming, you're painting, whatever you're doing. Um, so um, just a tip there. Plastics uh, can be very friendly um, with our epoxies. Uh, there's a, a lot of advantages. You can really play with how the product works. Now, you can see how thick this epoxy is. I have no worries whatsoever that this epoxy is going to fall off um, the, the popsicle stick. It is super, super, super thick epoxy. Why am I not worried about that? These epoxies are used um, or developed and designed with super, super, super thick citropic epoxies. There are zero fillers in flex epoxy. Fillers are the issues, uh, fillers give you multiple issues. You lose water resistance or waterproofing. Um, they become more brittle. They're not as flexible. Um, they tend to exotherm because you're not using really premium pure epoxies. You're usually filling it with some kind of junk. Um, with flex epoxy, you don't have that. Um, so uh, it's really nice and easy to work with. You could fill huge voids with this. I've seen folks do, you know, they'll fill a two inch through hole with flex epoxy, let it cure, you know, they'll put a piece of plastic over it just to smooth it over, and, um, let it cure, come back, scuff it and paint it. Um, so same thing here. You, you could just come over, add it to the repair, smooth it over. Again, it's super smooth. It's really buttery. You can add it to, you know, your smaller um, types of line repairs, or you can use it in, a, you know, a gentle fairing situation. You know, it's not really the best as a fairing compound, as I stated before, because, you know, it, it's a flexible repair epoxy. It's not going to sand as nicely as a fairing compound. If you have a big area or a, an area you have to repair structurally, sure, use the flex epoxy. But then you're going to have to come back and use a fairing compound on top. Now, you can hot coat flex epoxy with easy fair. What do I mean by hot coating? So while the, the product is mostly cured or, or tacked over, uh, as long as it's still firm, so you can't just push into it with your finger that's you know still tender. If it's if it's got a um, a skin to it, you could overcoat it with our other epoxies. It's called hot coating. Uh, the advantage of that is two: you don't have to sand it, and you don't have to wait an extended period of time for it to cure. So it's a real uh, production booster. You could do the repairs faster, and it saves you a sanding um, uh, process as well. Um, you know, if you're inside of a boat or something like that, you don't want to sand because you're worried about getting the sanding residue all over the interior of the boat, something like that. 
Hot coating is a really good method to prevent a lot of um, excess uh, dust in the, in the environment. Do we have any questions? No? Okay, great. Uh, so, a couple things about Flexpoxy. Uh, Flexpoxy has a super long open time. What do I mean by that? Flexpoxy will remain open at least an hour. So, here's the deal with epoxies. The thicker you make epoxies, the faster they cure. The thinner, the longer they cure. So, this hole right here that I just filled with the Flexpoxy, that'll probably cure in an hour, maybe a little bit less. These areas that I kind of fared, where it's a very thin film, it's probably going to be open longer than that. You might be talking two hours. So, um, keep that in mind. Um, if you're going to be a hot coating, you might just want to keep an eye on it. Um, do we have a question? Can the Easy Tech be used to hot coat over it? Yes, absolutely it can. Uh, wonderful question. So yeah, that's a, um, that question gets asked a lot because whenever you're doing a um, spider crack, again, spider cracks, all you're seeing is the result. You're not seeing the actual damage. Nine times out of ten, a spider crack is happening within the fiberglass. The fiberglass is it's stressing, it's cracking, it's flexing, and that's where your spider crack comes from. It's because there's an issue there with the fiberglass. V that out, Dremel, four inch grinder, something like that. Fill it with the flex poxy, squeeze it in there, leave it a little low so that you could come back. You could uh, then hot coat it with the, the easy text and no problem at all there. Um, one question that I'll talk about when we get to the fairing compound is can you gel coat over these? We're going to get to that shortly. Uh, staying on Flexpoxy here, um, this has three very uh, important strengths, and these are ways you really grade epoxies. Uh, one is called elongation. Elongation is the measurement of its flexibility. This maintains a 35% elasticity for its entire life. Other epoxies on the market do not maintain that flexibility. They will have a flexibility of 30% at the beginning of its life, but as you continue through its lifespan, it becomes more brittle and less flexible. This will start at 35% and remain at 35% through its entire life. How do we do that? A lot of it has to do with that slower cure and we do not add any fairing or uh, filling compounds to it. There's no additives added to this. This is pure thixotropic premium epoxy. So that's the, the advantages of this product. Sure, it might take a little bit longer to cure than say other products on the market, but there's a lot of advantages to this. So that's a big thing. Compressive strength. How does it handle pressure? So um, weight on top of it. So this will deal with up to 7,400 PSI in pressure. So that, that's a really, really high rating for an epoxy. The last thing is tensile strength. When you're talking tensile strength, it's the strength of pulling two um, substrates apart. It's the strength of the top of the coating to the bottom of the coating. That's 2,800 PSI. Again, very strong in terms of uh, a general use epoxy. Are there less expensive epoxies than Flexpoxy on the market? Absolutely. You may find Flexpoxy more towards the higher end of the price point in terms of epoxy pricing. Why? Because it's versatility. It's a structural repair epoxy. You're not going to find that um, with a lot of other epoxies. There's no fillers in here. This is straight up structural repair epoxy. Um, it's flexible. You could drill and tap it. You could screw it. You could nail into it. You could also stain it, uh, meaning you could change the color. You could add a solvent-based stain to it. You could also add our Easy Epoxy to it. Easy Epoxy is a solvent-based polyurethane. You can add a little bit of Easy Epoxy to the Flex Epoxy to tint it so it's closer to your overall paint job if you're not going to fare over it. Um, or if you're not going to prime, you should always prime because you have different substrates, but if you just want to paint over it, you could tint it towards its, its finished color with our Easy Epoxy. So it's super uh, useful, super easy to use, 
Um, again, might be a little bit more expensive than your other products that are on the market, but it's a much more versatile than the other products on the market. You could fill it, you could actually shape it with a, a planer uh, overnight, so you could actually shape it into a different uh, shape, whatever that may be. You could round it, corner it, things like that. Um, you could, you know, wrap a groove through it. So, super, super, super versatile epoxy. Um, one thing I touched on a little bit is exotherm. What you'll find with some other products on the market is um, this will have a tendency to exotherm. What is exotherm? It's the evolution of heat caused by a chemical reaction of the epoxy resin. Because again, we use a premium resin uh, system um, that dries a little bit slower than traditional or other epoxies. There's no exotherm. You could fill this in a large void, it's never gonna discolor, it's never gonna crack, it's never gonna craze, it's never gonna balloon or bubble. Um, you don't have any of those exotherm issues you have with less expensive epoxies. So you won't ever have to worry about thermal degradation with Flexboxy. All right, shifting gears here. We're gonna start talking about Easy Fair. How are we doing on time? Okay. Uh, I have no idea. Um, there's a general question. Great. Are you taking them? Yep. I'm repainting my boat. I've sanded the gel coat. Do I need to prime before using Easy Epoxy? Absolutely. Um, and the reason why you should always prime, twofold. Uh, dissimilar substrates. If you've done uh, epoxy repairs, you feel dings and dents and things like that, these repair epoxies will... Um, suck up solvent and vehicle from easy epoxy uh, differently than a primer. The other thing that uh, the other helpful part of using a primer is it actually uh, makes the final coat more durable overall. It gives a better platform for bonding for the top coat um, and also again makes all your substrates uniform so that you don't have a different finish overall. You know, if you're not using one of our epoxies, if you're using an inexpensive filler, especially an automotive fin uh, filler that really shouldn't be used on a boat, that'll absorb water if there's no primer over top of it. Um, and if you go and put our topside finish over top of it, you're not doing any justice. You're going to have a, an issue with its uh, overcoat. So always, always, always prime before top coats. Thank you for the question. Um, we're going to talk about uh, Easy Fair here. Again, anytime you're using a tube, you always want to dispense the first inch. Just like so. Easy fare, uh, the part A and part B are, are two different colors, just like our other products. The difference here being they are white and gray. Uh, any reason for that? No. Not, not in particular. Um, we do like using um, tracers in our epoxies. Uh, we're really go uh, geared towards the do-it-yourself uh, line. I mean, sure, we have tons of boat yards using our epoxies, but we really want to make this as simple uh, as possible to, to figure out and understand. So, you know, we want to make this as simple for the boat yard and obviously more simple for the folks that are picking up a tube of epoxy for the first time. So it's gray and white as you see here. Again, you always want to put your cap back on. Let's pop this back out. Now, Easy Fair comes with a tip. How often are you ever going to use a tip with a fairing compound? Probably not very often. Fairing compounds, you're usually doing a bigger area, you're doing a ding, you're doing, you know, dock rash, you're doing, you know, you, bigger repairs, but there is the need once in a while to have a tip. So a tip does come with it, all right? Um, for the bigger repairs, you know, for our boat yards and professionals in the industry, we offer Easy Fair in a court kit as well. Same mix ratio, two to one, um, really simple to mix and measure. It's, it's buttery smooth. It's really nice to work with. Um, we, we did offer gallons, so gallons are still in circulation. Gallons are available at distribution if need be. 
um, or your local um, you know, boatyards or retailers. Uh, so we're moving forward with tubes and corks, but gallons are still available in the marketplace. Um, one thing I really want to demonstrate with Easy Fair is I'm going to come close to the camera here. Have a look. Good. One thing what you'll see is there are no air bubbles in Easy Fair. Now, why am I showing that? We have gone through the expense of uh, having our products actually filled through a vacuum. Why have a finishing or fairing compound um, filled through vacuum? The reason being, the other fairings and filling compounds on the market are not filled in a vacuum. And what happens is you find that you need a secondary finishing compound to take out all the pinholes and all the um, imperfections in the coating. As you can see here, I'm whipping a bunch of air into it and there's still no air bubbles in it. Now you're, what you're seeing is some streaking in there, but that's because I haven't mixed the gray and white all together yet. But we've gone through great expense to have our epoxy is filled in a vacuum. See how buttery smooth that is? Uh, there is no resistance here. It's not thick, it's not sticky. What you'll find with a lot of traditional uh, products out there, like say a Formula 27, is you have a very you know old school technology, kind of like what I was talking about before with a very thick base and then a resin catalyst. Our resin and catalyst are the same consistency Super easy to mix, super easy to apply, super easy to measure, and just a little bit of work or a little bit of smoothing, and, it, and it's just buttery smooth. So, Easy Fair is a it's a it's a boatyard favorite. Um, it saves a ton of extra repair or secondary filling or fairing on top of it. There's no need for a glazing or finishing compound on top of it because it is so buttery smooth. Um, some other advantages of Flex, uh, I'm sorry, of uh, Easy Fair. Um, Easy Fair, again, filled in a vacuum. It's 100% true epoxy. Why is that important? It's 100% waterproof and 100% solvent proof. Most of the other fairing or finishing compounds that are on the, on the market today are not 100% waterproof or 100% solvent proof. So why is that an issue? Well, if you're fixing blisters on the bottom of the boat, or if you're fixing uh, repairs on the top of the boat, and you use a fairing compound that's not 100% waterproof or solvent proof, at some point, it's gonna suck in moisture and your repair is gonna fail. You don't wanna deal with that. So um, that's one of the big advantages. The other reason why we really enjoy or we like using epoxy technology in our um, in our fairing compound is the cure. We are talking a fast cure system here with Easy Fair. What's fast cure? We're talking three hours with a hand sand, four hours with a machine sand. You're not going to find that any place else on the market with a um, with an epoxy based fairing compound or non epoxy based fairing compound. Most are overnight, and then you have to overcoat it with something else to make it waterproof or solvent proof. So those are huge advantages of uh, Easy Fair. Um, the most popular question we get about our fairing compound is, can you gel coat over it? This is what I was talking about before. I said I'd, I'd, I'd talk my way into it. You cannot gel coat over epoxy. Why? There's been tons of studies done over the years. One actually done by NASA. Um, NASA studied gel coat over epoxies for years because they were looking for ways how to finish space shuttles and all their other projects. So what happens is if you put a polyester or vinyl ester gel coat over epoxy, what happens is you have a coefficient of, ex of expansion issue. What, what that means is the gel coat and epoxy, they expand and contract at two different rates. 
Will gel coats stick to epoxy? Absolutely, and it'll look good for a short period of time. The first time that repair gets hot or cold, you're going to have a coefficient of expansion issue. The second issue is, uh, and why it'll look good at first but not look good overall, the amines that are in epoxy will eventually, even after they're cured, affect the gel coat cure throughout, uh, throughout its coating. So you got two issues, coefficient of expansion, and you also have the reactivity of the amine uh, fighting the gel coat. So you never want a gel coat directly over epoxies. Now, the question becomes, well, you know, I really love working with this. It's so easy. Is there a solution? Yes, there is. There are intermediate epoxies out there called tie coats or epoxy tie coats. Um, one of the manufacturers that comes to mind is System 3. System 3 makes a coating called SB112. It's an intermediate um, epoxy that will act as a tie coat between uh, epoxy and gel coat. Yes, you are adding another step, but if you wanted to use gel coat over epoxy, you could do it by using that intermediate uh, epoxy resin. SB112 is it's really the only one I know of, but it gets used on like surfboard coatings all the time. Uh, surfboards, a lot of them have gel coat finishes. They fare with uh, epoxy fairing because they do need some structure to it. So uh, they find that works really well for them. Um, you can absolutely hot coat easy fare over flex epoxy. Can you uh, hot coat easy fare over um, marine over easy tax? You can, but I don't. I don't know if there's ever going to be a repair that you want to. Um, so just know that. Looks like we have a question. Can easy fare be used on a large ding in a brass keel? Absolutely. Um, it's a, it's a great product for that. Um, are you sure it's a brass keel though? Usually cast iron, uh, things like that. Um, we do on our website have instructions on how to do that properly. It's a little bit of an involved process here to go through on this Facebook Live, but we absolutely have um, had those resources on our website. Uh, let me see here. If you go on pitapaint.com, you can actually go on uh, the Easy Fair product data sheet or the Easy Fair um, product page, and we have these things called product data sheets. Uh, these product data sheets are super helpful. Uh, this is just the front page of it, talking about kind of thickness and elasticity and colors and vehicles and uh, product description. But on, on page two, which I don't have printed, um, page two goes through all of our systems and the exact ways how to do that. Easy Fair can absolutely be used for that, but you want to do a couple other things there because you want to treat the brass or the cast iron uh, to make sure you're treating it correctly. So hop on the website. Easy Fair absolutely can be used for that. There's a couple steps that you want to go through um, to make sure the brass is ready for the fairing compound. Great question, thank you very much. Um, again, comes in tubes, quarts, and there's still gallons out there. We even still have gallons at our warehouse. If, uh, if, uh, if there's a customer out there looking for gallons, we still have them. Um, so there's some information there for you. The last in our tubes here, again, same concept. It's a TAH cartridge. It's cut in half. Take the cap out. Take the top off. Throw it in your caulk gun. Dispense the first inch. Okay. Now what you see here is this is a much thinner product than both Flex Poxy or Easy Fit. So a few reasons for that. Uh, I'm going to dispense some right here. There's a bit of a misconception in the marketplace that 
if a if a, an epoxy is filled in a tube that they are all the same like some you know some big uh, private label manufacturers making everybody's epoxies and they're filled in big vats and everybody's products all the same uh, that couldn't be any more further from the truth um, you know the competitors product our product our own products as you can see are all very different from each other uh, they're all very built for specific uses. Again, put your cap back on. As you can see here, Easy Bond is very thin compared to Flexpoxy. Flexpoxy I showed you before is super thick. When you go to mix it up, um, it's, it's very buttery smooth. Uh, you can fill a large void with it. You could drill and tap it, like I was uh, describing before. This is flex epoxy, sanded flush, and then drilled and tapped. You could put a, uh, you know, a wing nut or whatever you want in there. Um, Easy Bond, it doesn't have as many uses, um, and the reason why is there's a need in the market for basically what I call as a super glue on steroids. Uh, what a lot of folks do that I hear or see in the marketplace is they'll go and buy Flexpoxy or they'll go and buy the competitor's product and they'll use it as glue. But I'll be honest with you folks, these are the most expensive glues in the world. If you're looking just to glue something, don't spend 30 bucks a tube. Spend 20 bucks a tube. And that's what Easy Bond was built for. Easy Bond was built if you want to put two separate substrates together and bond them together forever, that is what you use Easy Bond for. Easy Bond will do everything our other epoxies do. It'll bond fiberglass to wood, wood to aluminum, aluminum to fiberglass, um, you name it. These will stick to everything except for, you know, your, your plastics, right? Polys, things like that. So. Again, this is not a fairing compound. You'd never use this as a fairing compound. Um, this is a product you absolutely would use with the mixing tip because with most glues, you're not fairing or doing large areas with. You're gluing around a rub rail. You're, glue, you're gluing a, uh, the top of the hull to the bottom of the hull. Um, you're gluing um, uh, transducers into a hull. You know, those um, not through hull transducers, but ones that get layered on top of the hull, um, you know, like a hummingbird, something like that. You could use um, this for. Um, so this is a it's a it's a super glue on steroids. If you need to bond two things together permanently, easy bond is that product. Again, see how see how runny it is. Uh, it, again, completely different from Easy Fair, completely different from Flexpoxy. And again, it's a glue. If you're gonna just glue a couple things together, there's no better product in the world. Uh, the re one of the big advantages of Easy Bond, and one of the reasons why we came out with it, in the Northeast, every spring, we have an issue gluing things together permanently. A lot of people use 5200. 5200 is the worst product for gluing things together. Yes, it's a sealant and adhesive, but it doesn't cure all the way through. If you've ever cut into a big blob of, of 5200 after a period of time, the inside's still gooey, it's still soft. Um, this will 100% cure all the way through at temperatures all the way down to 35 degrees. There are no other epoxies on the market that will uh, cure down to 35 degrees in this type of package or type of uh, product. Super unique. Uh, there's really nothing else like it on the market. Again, if you need to bond two things together permanently, Easy Bond works extremely well. Its working temps are 35 degrees uh, Fahrenheit up to 90 degrees. And of course, you can apply epoxies at warmer temperatures, but you really don't want to. So 35 to 90 is the working temps for this. 
Um, one tip for overall cleanup for these products at a time. What time is it? Uh, just about one. Okay, great. Um, so one of the things that, uh, one of the overall tips to, for cleanup for these products is using our 97 epoxy thinner. Our 97 epoxy thinner, so the baby, works, the baby wipes work great, but if there's an area or a, you know, if you're talking like a woven fiberglass area where the baby wipe is just getting chewed up, it's not really working, um, you know, use our 97 epoxy thinner and a scotch bright or 97 epoxy thinner and um, some rags and it'll clean the area really well. Uh, so that's just a, a nice easy tip for you. Uh, I see we're uh, running over again. That's just the uh, life of uh, doing live demos. So one product I really want to spend a little bit of time on here is our splash zone. Um, our splash zone I moved over here. I'm sorry, um, the, the Odyssey can I moved over here. It's actually full of water. Um, but I also figured I'd give you a little plug for Odyssey HD, new product. So this product right here, Splash Zone, it's a one-to-one -one mix ratio. Part A and part B. Part A Part A is yellow in color. Part B is black in color. And what you're going to find here is this is the only epoxy you're ever going to find in the world that loves water. What do I mean by that? You could actually apply Splash Zone under the water and it'll cure. So we have commercial uh, you know, vessels out in, the, out in the Hudson and out in the Pacific Northwest that they'll hit a piling or something, they'll knock a hole, they'll take a piece of plywood or something just as kind of a backing, you know, if it's a big hole, they'll mix up a splash zone, they'll stick the plywood on there or whatever else, aluminum or whatever they got kicking around in the bilge, and they'll slap it in the hole and they'll use that as the repair until they come back in, which could be six months, a year later. And then we, we see patches out there that are five or 10 years old. So like I said, Splash Zone loves water. And I'm gonna demonstrate that here. Um, it comes in three different sizes. It comes in a, a cork, cork kit, which is two half pint or two pints, which is this bottom can here. It comes in this gallon container, which is basically two half gallons. And then it comes in uh, two gallons, which is a gallon and gallon. It's actually a gallon of part A, gallon of part B. As I mentioned before, it loves water. So what I do is I actually take water and I put it in the can. Splash Zone will not absorb the water. So when you're done with it, you can actually just pour the water out. I use the water as a flowing agent. So. As you can see, this product is super, 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 super thick. It's like a super thick peanut butter. Um, so, let me just get this thing here. Uh, it's like super thick peanut butter. If you go and stick a trowel in here or a mixing stick or something like that, it's just going to stick to it. Throughout all my years, I've been with Pettit for 11 years. Throughout all my years, the easiest way of ever working with Splash Zone is using water. So keep your, your gloves wet. Again, it's a one-to-one. -one. So by using the water here, look how easy that came out. Okay? So that's like a golf ball. I, you know, if you're going to use a mixing palette or something like that, get that wet too. That way it doesn't stick to it. See? Nice and easy. Now, also it didn't stick to your gloves at all. So what I'll do is I'll just make sure there's nothing else on my gloves. I'll come back through, I'll re-wet my glove, and I'll grab what I think is a golf ball size of, splat, of the Part B out. Again, you could do this by weight, you could do it by volume. Um, you know, our epoxies are so nice and friendly to use 
um, that you really don't have to go too nuts. I mean, if you're off a little bit, it's still going to work. So here's a, you know, part A, part B. It looks like I actually need a little bit more black or part of this part here. Okay. Now you could just knead the two together. Again, water's your friend. Starts to get a little sticky. Rewet your hands. What you'll find is as it starts to come together, it'll start to turn olive, uh, olive green, or duck boat green, as some people call it. It'll turn a dark green. Now, you could also just dip the whole thing in some water. Again, it cures under water. Water's its friend. You don't have to be afraid of getting it wet. Water's also used as its flowing agent. So splash zone is a, it's a structural repair epoxy. There's no two ways about it. This stuff is super permanent. We have NASCAR teams drill and tap heads with splash zone. It holds uh, temperature very well. It holds bolts very well. Um, you could drill and tap it. It's an awesome product that you can do just about anything with. Again, keep it wet. No problem at all. Splash zone gets used all over the boat. A lot of times, if you've got a sailboat, you go and hit a, um, a bar, a you know, sandbar, or, or some type of structure in the water. You take a big ding or dent or divot into your keel or something like that. Well, you can just mix up our splash zone here and push it right into the repair, or uh, push it right into the damage. Um, if you're going to smooth it out, or I, I suggest smoothing it out before it cures, because once it cures, it's a grind. There's no, there's no two ways about it. It's, a, um, it, it's not easy to, to sand. So you can push this into the repair. You can make this as thick as you want. You can make it as thin as you want. Again, the rule with epoxies are the thicker it is, the faster it cures. The thinner it is, the longer it cures. So that's our splash zone. Super, uh, super easy to work with. Um, again, super structural. Um, it's a slower cure. Think of an overnight cure with that. Um, it, you know, again, if it's a bigger area, it might cure a little bit faster. Uh, but overall, um, you're talking an overnight cure with the splash zone. A couple other quick things. Always check substrate temperature before you start working with it. Always make sure it's at least 50 degrees when you're dealing with epoxies, unless you're dealing with Easy Bond. Uh, Easy Bond, again, you can let that cure down to 35 degrees. Always check your substrate temperature before working with epoxies. And what I'll do is I will save the Pettit Protect discussion for, um, for next week. Um, next week we're going to come and talk about some other uh, products here. Uh, we're going to talk about some varnishes. We're going to talk about, we'll talk about uh, our Petit Protect since we missed that this week. We're already over by about 10 minutes. I don't want to hold you folks up from your day. Uh, I want to wrap it up and thank you for your time. Um, I hope this has been uh, a useful um, portion of your day here. I hope it gave you a good insight into some of the epoxies that we offer or most of the epoxies that we offer. Again, I'll touch on Petit Protect and I'll touch on Aluma Protect next time. Um, if you have questions, please, uh, again, ask us those questions either on the Facebook Live, email us, uh, marketing at pittapaint.com. Um, you could always go on our website. We have a Ask the Expert uh, portal on there where you could actually put in your information and you could email us and you could send us some photos and things like that with, with any kind of questions you have. Um, our website is a great resource when it comes to these epoxies. As I mentioned before, we have our technical data sheets on our website, super helpful. Um, we have our actual um, brochures and pamphlets and things that describe uh, what our epoxies are used for on our website. We, this is a digital version on our website. It actually talks about what the products are, what they do, how to use them. So we have a lot of resources available for you. So 
With that being said, again, I want to thank you for everything. Uh, I want to thank you for your time today. We'll be back here next week, next Friday, same time. We're going to be here at noon. Um, we're going to go through some other different uh, pet products. And um, if you find this uh, valuable, please share it with other boaters and uh, give us some feedback. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend.